السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلاة عيا لصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله خاتم أنبيائه وسيد أصفيائه المخصوص بالمقام المحمود في اليوم المشهود فصلى الله على النبي المختار وآل بيته الأخيار وأصحابه الأطهار ونختص بالرضا ساداتنا أبا بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فأما بعد فأوصي نفسي وإياكم بتقوى الله فقد قال عز من قائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Dear respected brothers and sisters, we start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful and the most beneficent, and we seek refuge in Him alone from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whoever Allah allows to go astray will never find guidance. We bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we bear witness that our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His final prophet and messenger. And I remind myself and you, the respected brothers and sisters, to have God consciousness, to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he told us, O you those who believe, fear Allah like he should be feared and do not die except in a state of submission to him alone. And I remind myself and you to send abundant salutations upon your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So every time you hear his name, send salutations upon your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, as we, uh, as we go through life, each one of us has a different goal to attain. They have a, a different tasks that they want to check off their box. They have certain career moves they want to move, they want to make. They have certain education goals they want to achieve. A house they want to buy, a certain amount of money they want to accumulate. So each one of us has a different goal. But as we have these worldly goals, and I'm not saying it's wrong to have them, it's not wrong to be ambitious, but there's also a goal that so many people lack or forget about. And it's a goal that we need to make sure that we have, and that is to attain the love of Allah and the love of His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how we attain his love. He tells us, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking through the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, say, O oh Muhammad, if you surely, if you indeed love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, then follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Only then surely Allah will love you, subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that one of the ways to attain love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through following the prophetic method, through following the prophetic uh, messenger, through emulating him physically and internally as well. He tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ أَوْ إِسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have an excellent example for whoever has hope in Allah and the last day, subhanAllah. And as Imam Shafi'i radiallahu anhu rahimahullah, he tells us in a beautiful lines of poetry, تَعْصِلْ إِلَاهَ وَأَنْتَ تُظْهِرُ حُبَّهُ هَذَا مُحَالٌ فِي الْقِيَاسِ بَدِيعُ لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَطَعْتَهُ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُطِيعُ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ يُغْنِيكَ بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنْهُ وَأَنْتَ لِشُكْرِ ذَلِكَ مُضَيِّعُ Subhanallah. He's telling us in summary that you claim to love Allah, you claim to love the Messenger of Allah, yet you disobey Him. This, is, this, is, can, this cannot be. This intellectually cannot be. If you were surely, if you actually loved Him, you'd have followed Him for indeed a lover is obedient, is a follower of his beloved, subhanallah. And when we say following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we don't mean just in his external sunnahs, although this is, this is important. Following his external sunnah is important as well, but we need, sure, we need to make sure that we follow his etiquette. We follow his prophetic manners. We follow his akhlaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And sallu al habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from his prophetic manners is his mercy to the entire world. His mercy to the child, his mercy to the adults, his mercy to females and males alike, subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, matter of fact, when praising our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he praised him for his mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Indeed, O Prophet of Allah, we did not send you except as mercy للعالمين, not just to mankind, to every inanimate and inanimate object, subhanallah. He was sent as mercy to the entire world, to the alameen. And from his mercy was shown when he was personally being harmed. And he was shown at different levels whether he was being harmed physically or emotionally or, th or verbally, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Matter of fact, in the battle of Uhud, he was harmed physically. His face was cut, his tooth was broken, and the companions, radiallahu anhum, in a moment of, of, of despair and lack of better word, in a moment of weakness, in a moment that they, f they felt that the mushrikeen were about to kill them. They said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you raise your hands and make dua against them? And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his prophetic mercy, he said, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. O oh Allah, guide my people, for indeed they do not know. Subhanallah. Look at that prophetic mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He also showed his prophetic mercy when people attacked him verbally. Umun Aisha radiallahu anha narrates a beautiful story to us. She said a group of people came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were not Muslims, did not accept Islam. And instead of greeting him with the greeting of peace that we all know, salamu alaykum, they changed the word just a little bit and he had a whole different meaning. They said, assalamu alaykum, which means death be upon you. So Umun Aisha heard this. She heard this and she started to curse them back. She said, Assalamu alaikum, may death be upon you and may Allah curse you. To which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped her. And he said, O Aisha, show leniency. For indeed Allah loves leniency in everything. Subhanallah. Imagine the moment he was being accused or being harmed verbally, yet he was still teaching our mother Aisha radiallahu anha to show leniency, to show mercy. This is his prophetic mercy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is that mercy that we need to follow in its footsteps sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another instance of his mercy is to people that misbehave. People that might have shortcomings. People that might do something that is not according to our sunnah. That is not according to to the adab, to the manners that the Prophet ﷺ teaches. 
And in a beautiful narration, we know we all might have heard of the story of the Bedouin man who came to the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we're told a single prayer is worth more than 500 prayers, SubhanAllah. He came to the masjid and he went to a certain corner and he started to urinate, SubhanAllah. Can you imagine if this happens in our day and age? I'm not telling you someone might come to this mission and urinate, but just imagine your reaction when you hear a baby crying, when you hear a baby laughing and running around the rows. What is the first reaction that we have? A lot of us, as soon as the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum, we start to look around to find this, per this child's father or mother so we can tell them to keep the child home, subhanAllah. But look at the prophetic mercy, look at the prophetic tradition of my beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This person started to urinate in a corner. And the companions in a moment of anger got up to stop this man. And maybe even scold him. To which the Prophet ﷺ said, Da'ur, let him. As let him finish, don't scare him. And when he's done, spill a bucket of water his urine and they should handle it. SubhanAllah. The prophetic mercy wasallam. And when the person was done, when this Bedouin was done, the Prophet wasallam talked to him and explained to him that these are houses of worship. We don't do such thing in the houses of worship. They're places of prayer and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at the prophetic mercy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let him finish. And when he's done, spill a bucket of water over his urine, subhanallah. And he tells the companions, فَإِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُمْ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَلَمْ تُبْعَثُمْ مُعَسِّرِينَ Indeed, you were sent to give glad tidings and you were not sent to make things difficult. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a different narration when he's advising the companions radiallahu anhum, he says, Yassiru wa la tu'assiru wa bashiru wa la tunaffiru. Make things of their religion easy for people and make it easy to facilitate and don't make things easy for people. And give people glad tidings and do not make them despair from the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is the prophetic tradition that we all need to follow. And another moment that shows us his prophetic mercy Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the prophetic mercy that we need to intend to follow is when someone comes to him with shortcomings, when someone comes to him with sin. And a beautiful narration, Anabi Darda, he tells us, Anna rajulan yuqalu lahu harmala, ata ila nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal, ya rasulallah, al imanu ha huna, al imanu ha huna, wa ashara ila lisani, wa nifaqu ha huna, wa liyadu billah, wa ashara ila kalbi, wa la adhkuru Allah illa qalila. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجعل لسانه ذاكرا وقلبه شاكرا وارزقه حبي وحب من يحبني وصبر وسير أمره إلى الخير and towards the end of, of the narration the man says يا رسول الله إن لي إخوانا كنت فيهم رأسا ألا أدلك عليهم فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من جاءنا كما جئتنا استغفرنا له كما استغفرنا لك ومن أصر على ذنبه فالله أولى به لا نخرق على أحد سترا سبحان الله the prophetic mercy of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a man comes to him declaring that he is a hypocrite he says يا رسول الله الإيمان ها هنا faith is in the mouth I say I'm a believer I claim that I'm a Muslim but there is hypocrisy in the heart Subhanallah. And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make dua for him. To which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for him. He said, Oh Allah, allow his tongue to be filled with remembrance. And allow his heart to be filled with gratitude towards you. And allow him to have my love, to have love of Rasulullah. And love of those who love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And allow his end matters to be of khair, to be of good. To which the man after this dua claims and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I had friends of hypocrites that I was their leader. Should I not tell you about them? He said, no. Whoever comes to us and asks for forgiveness and asks for dua, we will make dua for them as well. But whoever remains firm upon his hypocrisy, we will not uncover anyone. We will not go behind anyone and uncover their secret sins that they perform. But whoever comes to us will make dua for them. Subhanallah, look at the prophetic mercy. He's not going behind people trying to find their shortcomings. They're not, he's not going behind people trying to find their sins. But whoever comes to him, he makes dua for them. He makes istighfar for them. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep them firm. This is the prophetic mercy that you and I should follow. These are the prophetic manners that we need in our day and age in order to call people 
to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, this is the manners that we need to call the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back to the firm path, back to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to do it through this prophetic mercy. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ فَيَا فَوْزَ الْمُسْتَغْفِرِينَ الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى فأما بعد As we said dear respected brothers and sisters one of the things that we need in our life is to ensure that we have love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul and we do that through following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through imitation and through emulation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but it's not just external imitation but following his akhlaq following the sunnah that he called upon the manners that he called us to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from those manners is showing mercy to everyone showing mercy to our siblings showing mercy to our family members showing mercy to our community members showing mercy to the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regardless of their shortcomings they're still from the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah uh, a great scholar once uh, and as scholars used to do, he went and attended a khutbah of his students to, to ensure that their students are following the, the prophetic mercy and following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this khutbah, he saw that the students was being too harsh with people. He was spreading a message that most people cannot handle. So he took the students after the khutbah and he walked him to a square where people usually sell merchandise and there is uh, entertainment. And this is in an Islamic country. And that square was filled up to the max, subhanAllah. And this was during Jum'ah, which means those people did not even attend the masjid, subhanAllah. And he pointed to all of these people. He said, you see all of these people right here. Despite the fact that they did not attend Jum'ah, they still from the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you have no right to kick them out. You need a message of leniency to call those people to the houses of Allah. But you have no right to kick them out from the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As long as they have declared the shahada, as long as they have declared the statement that they're followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot kick them out. But you need a message of mercy to bring them back. And this message of mercy should be a message that we don't cause others to despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless how much we see that they have shortcomings, we never should cause them to despair. And in a beautiful narration, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu tells us the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling the companions a story from the previous nations. And he said in the previous nations of Banu Israel, there were two brothers, there were two friends. One of them was consistently striving in worship and striving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other person was constantly striving in sin. And this worshiper will constantly advise his brother to, to leave sin alone and ask for repentance and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the sinner will keep tell, telling that person, leave me alone, leave me alone, not yet. And in one moment, this worshiper sees his brother in sin and he tells him, Aqli', leave the sin alone. To which this worshiper in a moment maybe of anger, he says, did Allah send you as a watch person over me? Leave me, be, leave me between me and my Lord. And this is a statement that we hear so Often today, just has different vocab. We hear so many people tell us, only God can judge me. Or do you judge me because you sin differently? Similar statement that this brother mentioned. The sinner mentioned to the worshiper. To which the worshiper in a moment of anger said, Allah will never forgive you. And Allah will never allow you to enter Jannah. Subhanallah. And when their souls were taken back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the sinner, Allow this person to enter Jannah because of my mercy. Subhanallah. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, none of you shall enter Jannah except with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the companions in a moment of shock, they said, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, not even you ya Rasulullah. When your previous and past sins and future sins were all forgiven. And you were given such a great status, you will not enter Jannah except with the mercy of Allah. He said, لا إلا أي تغمدني الله برحمته. No, I will not enter Jannah except if Allah encompasses me with His mercy. So we're only entering Jannah because of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that mercy has encompassed the sinner that has spent his entire life sinning. 
he was, it was said to him, allow so-and-so to enter Jannah because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was told to that person who spent his life in worship, take this person to Jahannam. And he was told to him, did you have control over my mercy? Did you have control over who I forgive and I do not forgive? Or did you have knowledge of, of my mercy and its limitation? Subhanallah. To which Abu Hurairah radiallahu anha at the end of the narration tells us, I swear to God that this person has uttered a word, has uttered a statement that has destroyed his life and his afterlife. Because he caused someone to despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the mistake that we should not fall into. Yes, we give advice to our brothers and sisters. We give nasiha. Ad-deen nasiha Indeed, nasiha is from our religion. We give nasiha to our siblings, to our family members, to our friends, to our colleagues, to our community members. But we do it like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. We do it like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book told us to do so. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and kind speech. This is what Allah tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a different verse, he tells him, فَبَيْمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Indeed, O Muhammad, it is by mercy from Allah that you were lenient with them. And if you had been rude in your speech or harsh in your hearts, they would have disbanded from about you. Subhanallah. The companions would have disbanded from around the Prophet if he was rude in his speech or harsh in his heart. What about us? How do we even compare to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And we expect people just to listen to us. Just because we say, oh brother, I have a nasiha for you, that's it. They're going to listen right away and follow in our footsteps. No. It takes work. Subhanallah. It takes that prophetic mercy that we mentioned. And lastly, it takes that we need to have the intention that when we're doing so, we're doing it for the sake that we want people to be saved. We're doing it because we want khair for the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're not doing it just to check a box to say, okay, I invited so-and-so to this lecture. I invited so-and-so to the masjid, but they did not accept, they did not respond, they did not come, I did my part. That's not, that's not the purpose. The purpose is because you genuinely want khair. You genuinely want goodness for your dear respective brothers and sisters. You genuinely want your brother to be standing next to you in prayer. And you want generally to see your brother in Jannah to Firdaus. This is why we do it. And this is the etiquette that our previous scholars radiallahu anhum had. And I will conclude with this beautiful story of Imam Ma'roof al-Karhi. He was walking with his students next to a river and they saw a group of people that they were in sin. They were drinking prohibited drinks and listening to prohibited music. And the students said to Imam al-Karhi, a righteous person, why don't you raise your hands and make dua against them? Look at all the blessings that Allah has provided for them. And look how they're disobeying Allah using those same blessings that he gave them. Why don't you make dua against them, my imam? So he raised his hands, radiyallahu anhu. And he said, Ya Mawlai, Ya Sayyidi wa Ilahi, Kama farrahtahum fi dunya as'aluka an tufarrihahum fi al-akhirah. Oh my Lord, oh Sayyidi, oh my beloved, I ask you like you made them happy in the dunya, to make them happy in the akhirah as well. Subhanallah, wanting well for his brothers. So the students were shocked. We asked you to make dua against them, not for them. He said if Allah was to make them happy in the akhirah, he would allow them to repent in the dunya. And this will not cause you any harm. Someone repenting in the dunya should not harm you. Regardless how much sin you think that they have fallen into in their previous, in their previous days. That doesn't matter. That will not harm you if they repent and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be your end goal. And this is the end goal that our righteous predecessors had in mind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow our hearts to be filled with mercy for the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to encompass with his mercy and allow us to have love of Rasulullah and allow us to have love of those who love Rasulullah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from that which we have learned. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to act on that which we have learned. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to have sincere intention with that which we have learned when calling people to the way of Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lastly to accept from all our actions from us and to allow us the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil firdaus al-a'la wa akhiru da'wani alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqim salah Allah, Allah, Allah.
أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا واستقيموا أقبلوا على الله بقلوب خاشعة Keep all your brothers and sisters across the globe in your du'as, insha'Allah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Deen إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله لمن حمده Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Deen Iyaka Na'bud Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Lazina An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو لبتر الله سمع الله لمن حمده
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله